Okay. Oh, so yeah, it's been a long time since I've done one of these uh, Dauntless videos and I thought this would be a good opportunity to talk about Dauntless, um, where it is, where I think it's heading and basically why this game means so much to me. Let's start off how I actually found this game in the first place. So I got my Nintendo Switch in around, I think it was 2019 and Dauntless was literally one of the first games I saw on the Nintendo eShop. It looked great, you know, I have played a lot of MMO games and I was definitely looking for something new but something that wasn't Monster Hunter but I'm definitely not into those kind of games. So I installed Dauntless and as soon as I installed it and played it for the first time I knew that this was the kind of game that I wanted to record and at the time I was still recording Minecraft videos and I didn't really know where my channel was going. And I should also mention that when I started playing Dauntless it was the 20... I think it was the 2019 or 2020 Easter event. Um, so that's the first thing that got me into it. If you go back on my YouTube channel you can see the one of the first videos I ever uploaded was from the Easter event. And I started uploading videos, you know, it took a while for the algorithm to recognise my videos because I had traditionally been doing Minecraft videos. And before I knew it, within a year, my videos were blowing up. Like, when I say blowing up, I mean tens of thousands and hundreds of thousands of views and I did not expect this. I also didn't know that Dauntless was basically a brand new game when I started recording it. I only found this out like years later. Dauntless is the reason that my YouTube channel got monetized again. And that's a huge thing because I was originally monetized, I wasn't getting a lot of money from YouTube, you know, basically like pocket money or an allowance from YouTube. It was cool to just have that little bit of money, you know, a little bit of pocket money just to put aside and to buy my YouTube equipment with, you know, buy new headphones, buy new gaming headsets, buy new capture cards and stuff like that, it was really cool. So when Dauntless came around and I was re-monetized, it literally blew my mind to the point where I couldn't believe what was going on. So I want to say that first of all, um, it basically revived my YouTube channel. Dauntless is also the game that got me through lockdown 2020. And I mean that quite literally. Um, those of you that have been watching my videos for a long time know that I lost my job in 2020. I was unfairly dismissed. My company had no reason to uh, fire me. At the time, I didn't have enough money to fight them, so I couldn't do anything about it. So to say that I was depressed was an understatement. I basically had no money and I had no job. So YouTube, doing YouTube and being re-monetized again with Dauntless was literally like a dream come true. So I want you all to know that before we get into the nitty gritty of Dauntless. I did apply for Dauntless Partner at one point and I actually was accepted, but at the time the game was declining to a point where I didn't want to be associated with the game, specifically after the Reforge update and all of that drama that came with it. And we all now know that Phoenix Labs in the past didn't actually listen to the partners. If the partners had any kind of criticism or any kind of um, you know, feedback to them, they didn't actually listen to it. So I didn't want to be in that position of like, you know, giving feedback to them and them not listening to me and me just getting frustrated. So that's another reason why I didn't join the partnership. Firstly, I want to tell you about some of the things that they've added and removed from the game. So I think it was a couple of years ago, uh, we had a Granny's Antidote and we had Granny's Heartbreaker Potions were introduced when Agoras was introduced into the game. The Antidote removed the Poison status effect completely and the Granny's Heartbreaker Tonic increased crit critical strike change and damage by 25% which is insane for a game like Dauntless where you're constantly you know, needing critical damage. You know, you can get rid of the poison status effect by literally just standing still. But the idea of being able to craft a potion that instantly takes it away, or actually heals you when you take in poison, um, 
is just absolutely insane. So that's the first thing that kind of annoyed me when they took that out of the game. The second thing I want to talk about, and the second thing they took out of the game, is one of the most obvious things. So the faction past and the faction future say apart. That completely added a new mechanic to the game, and for whatever reason, they removed it. Now later on during that update we found out that those were only season updates which means they would only last for one season in the game. But that wasn't really made clear when ooh, when those were actually implemented in the game. And also we had the Friend Forever which is now the drone but the drone that we now have is basically a worse version and a more complicated version of the drone that we originally had on the Faction Future and Faction Past Slayer Pass. And now I want to talk about the grindy and underwhelming updates that this game has had within the last couple of years. And obviously the first thing I want to talk about is the Reforge system in this game. I have to admit that I was one of those people that was actually very excited for the Reforge system. When I first saw it and first started playing it, I was like, wow, this is actually really cool. You know, you can upgrade your weapons, they can do more damage. And I thought the whole mechanic itself, you know, reforging your weapons, getting the Aether Hearts, getting the Aether Sparks was really cool. But like everyone, the more I reforged my weapons, the more I found it was just a grind. Now, obviously there are three types of planes to Dauntless. There are those that like the grind, they like trials, and they like the challenge. There are people like me who don't like the grind, but they do like the challenge of the behemoths. And there are other people that just play the game for what it is and they don't really care either way. And as a person who didn't like to grind, I now absolutely hate the reforce system. It's just grindy and there's literally no point to it. So if you go into your Slayer's Path right here, you can see I've basically reforged my axe and my war pike to the fifth level. But they don't, they barely give you anything. Like plus three weapon wound damage for each level. And you don't really see that in the game, to be honest. The potions do more than that. You know, and I only reforged these ones because these are the weapons that I use the most. And you can get banked XP as well, which is... The banked XP was a good um, addition, I have to admit. Like, the ability to actually go up to reforge level 20 and then use the excess reforge levels to reforge another weapon is kind of cool. Um... And you can see that I'm now <laughs> unlocking all these because I didn't do it before. And we'll see what this gives us. So this gives us increase the maximum level that bank XP can be spent towards when forged weapon skill to level 16. So yeah, you think it would give us like some kind of perk or some kind of reward for getting to a certain level of reforge, and it doesn't give you anything. So the next thing I want to talk about are <laughs> the glider challenges. These were something that, first of all, I really wanted in the game because we had gliders, but we had nothing to do with them, <laughs> you know? They were good, like, getting us from island to island or getting some of the chests on those islands, but that was it, unless we didn't do anything other than that and you can't even use them in Roundscape. So originally, when the glider challenges were added, I was like, great, we finally have something to do with the gliders. First of all, the glider challenges aren't on every single island. They're only on the Conundrum Rocks, the Conundrum Rocks and the Paradox Breaks hunting grounds. Second of all, they take patrol keys to actually activate the Glider challenge. So all of the keys that you've been gathering up on every single hunting ground, you now have to spend to do a single Glider challenge. And that's every single time, so if you do the glider challenge and you fail it, you then have to spend more patrol keys in order to attempt it again. Which makes absolutely no sense because there's literally no other way to get patrol keys other than finding the chests on the hunting grounds. The other thing is the rewards that you get from this stuff. <laughs> like, <laughs> it's actually pathetic. So I'm going to show you right here. Um, so let me get to the end of this challenge. And then let's see what we get from here. 
we get rams, aether hearts, bounty tokens, and merits. That's all we get. We can literally get that from the chests that we find on each hunting grounds. There's nothing special, there's no special item or cosmetics or like an amp even or an effect, a positive effect like speed or damage, nothing. That's all you get. So what is the point of doing them? And you only get 1,300 rams for this. That's it. You know, obviously there are other things as well like behemoth clipping and you know pangar slapping you with its tail twice and pangar whipping its head around and hitting you with its head even though you're nowhere near the head same thing with drask you know you're in a hunting ground or in an escalation with pangar or drask and you get hit by both of their heads when you're nowhere near the heads all the tails so <laughs> this game is really good and it's really frustrating and i'm really sad at where it is right now um, and I know a lot of people are feeling the same way the one thing that I didn't mention that I do love and I really wish that Phoenix Lab would implement again are the community um, events that we had for the void event or the void timeline and those were really good you know went to escalations we collected the glowing mushrooms or whatever they were <laughs> and you know, that was a community event. We have to, you know, we had to come together as a community, collect items, and then an event would be triggered when we collected those items or completed bounties and quests. And that was great. I mean, the quest itself was quite grindy, but as a community, we did it. And it was so much fun to be able to do that as a community. And that's the only community event that I think has ever been in the game. I might be wrong because I joined it quite late, but from what I've seen, that is the only community event that we've ever had in this game, which just seems like a real shame. So I really feel like they should implement some kind of monthly or weekly events in this game. I think that would really revive it to a certain point, you know? I really do. We may have some light at the end of the tunnel after all. Some of you may already know this, but Phoenix Labs have completely changed. <laughs> they have actually started to communicate with us effectively. They've been telling us what they've been up to for the last couple of months or years. We finally now know what they've been working on. And I personally am looking forward to it. I'm looking forward to playing new aspects of this game. And I'm looking forward to Phoenix Labs actually communicating with us every time there's a major change in the game. So they recently announced the Shattered Isles content update, which is basically a revamp and update of the entire game. Which is just absolutely insane. Now I think if they announced this a few, like last year literally, that would have given us a lot of motivation to keep playing the game. And it would have given us the positivity that we needed at the time. Um, you know, it's, it's just crazy that they waited this long to tell us when we've all been waiting for something like this for a really long time. Okay, so the Shuttle Isles content update will include a new permanent progression system, i.e. Reforge is now dead and gone. We no longer have to grind for our Reforge levels anymore. A weapon skill, sorry. Combat upgrades, including the ability to swap weapons during combat. I don't really know the point of this. I don't really know anyone that's asked for this to be implemented into the game, but you know, it could be cool to be able to swap between an axe and a war pipe depending on what behemoth you're um, fighting. You know, for example, maybe I want to use my war pipe if I'm in the escalation. I might want to use my war pipe for Ember Maid and Wrist Stalker. I might want to use an axe for Boreas and Pangar, that kind of thing. Maybe, you know, you can kind of see it implemented like that. But other than that, I don't really understand uh, why someone would want to swap weapons. Uh, another thing they have said is that they have improved behemoth behaviour. Again, we all have our gripes with the behave behemoth behaviour, whether that's lag or getting hit, hit by the heads and the tails and things like that. Uh, enhanced core gameplay. We don't really know what that means yet. Um, maybe something to do with the environments or the levels 
maybe something new with the escalations. I'm not really sure what that means. System wide upgrades. I really hope this means they'll uh, fix the disability issues with Nintendo Switch. I recently discovered that this game plays much better if it's actually installed on the Nintendo Switch and not on a SD card, which I think is kind of weird. Because uh, when I had it on my SD card, it literally wouldn't connect to the game servers. I was crashing when I was going into hunting game. I'm um, hunting game, sorry. <laughs> Hunger, <laughs> Hunger Games, no. Um. I found out that my game was crashing and not connect and not connecting to the servers because I had it installed on my SD card instead of on the actual Nintendo Switch as it was supposed to be. And also the return of single behemoth pursuit hunts and much much more. See I actually do really miss pursuit hunts like I miss jumping on an island and having to actually find the behemoth and someone throwing their firework in the air and showing us where the behemoth was and spending a lot of time learning the moves of the behemoth and you know all that kind of stuff. They should be implementing new behemoths so I'm really looking forward to that as well. And they also told us that the Shuttered Isles update will be here by summer 2024 and I cannot wait. I really can't wait. And I know a lot of people um, can't wait for it either. So I'm looking forward to it. Um, I'm just wondering how many people will actually be patient enough to wait for it. Because I know a lot of people have stopped playing this game altogether. They've uninstalled the game completely. So I do wonder if there will be any motivation from some people or some players to actually come back to this game when they see the update. And after the Summer 2024 Shadow of the Isles update, Phoenix Lab will be going back to their weekly slash monthly updates. Hopefully they will actually be able to spend more time on these updates because as a lot of us have discovered over the last few years, a lot of these updates have been rushed. A lot of them haven't been implemented properly. A lot of them had bugs. So I really hope they're able to get the update out and spend time on the updates or the subsequent updates. So I am very hopeful for this game. I really hope that this game um, can be successful again and I hope people come back to it. It does sound like Phoenix Labs has had a shakeup um, internally so hopefully that means they've had more management or new management so I really am looking forward to the changes that are coming our way. So those are my thoughts on Dauntless and the current situation and what we have to look forward to in the future. Let me know what you think. I'm sorry if this video was so long. I just had to get all of my <laughs> thoughts on, you know, one video so I didn't have to do this ever again. Uh, so yeah, I have an emotional bond to this game and I will be beyond heartbroken to see it just, you know, sink into nothingness. So I really am hoping and trying to be optimistic with this game. I want it to come back to where it was. I want the community to come back to it. I want the partners to come back to it. Thank you so much for watching. Thank you to all you who stuck around even though I literally haven't recorded any Dauntless uh, content for the last couple of years. Uh, thank you all for watching and I'll see you in the next one. Peace out.